and find a way to get ESPN College Football analyst and expert Trevor Maddich back on the show. That is what we are doing right now. It is another Maddich Monday. Joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Oh, man, it's great to be back. What a, what a couple of games to start the season. Wow. How do you explain it? And you can't. Okay, we started last week asking you about your raw reaction when you saw Mitch Matthews catch the touchdown pass at Nebraska. What was your raw reaction when you saw Mitchell Jurgens catch the game winner against Boise State? My, I was in the car driving from East Lansing, the Oregon-Michigan State game, back to D.C. to do Redskins stuff. I had pulled over to watch uh, that game on the Watch ESPN app. And on the side of the road, if anybody was looking, they would have seen the guy looking at a little screen, and then they would have seen this. He did it again! He did it again! <laughs> no way! I was yelling in the car that he did it again. It was crazy to see the same kind of... of Unexpected, unpredictable beauty to win a football game. And that's what it took to beat those two good teams. Boise State, number 20, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's a fourth and three. He just throws it up. He makes a play. I've been talking about a little bit about luck versus skill involved in these plays. What do you, what do you think when it comes to luck and skill? Well, there's, there's both involved, but neither one of them come into play unless you, you have the courage to go for it. I mean, they will throw the ball deep, and the receivers will go up and go after that football. And so skill can come into it, luck can come into it, but it's the courage that sets it up to begin with. And keep this in mind, it's courage not just from the players but from the coaches to call those plays and to send that ball deep because BYU – Right now, it's taking advantage of one of the metrics that that makes you win. I mean, turnover margin is the thing that most people think of when you think of the most important single statistic or metric, turnover margin. But another metric is up there with equal importance, and that is explosive plays. And most people define those as passes over 20 yards, runs over 10 yards. And BYU is consistently in the first two weeks getting explosive plays down the field, taking advantage of that metric. Any, anybody with a computer degree can tell you that clinically that's what makes it work. But from an emotional standpoint to watch it, what a thrill to see those balls come down. Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation, ESPN College football analyst. Of all of the things, good things, bad things that happened on Saturday night, Trevor, what stuck out the most to you from BYU? Toughness. I loved how they fought the fight. They were down in the mud with Boise State, and Boise, Boise was trying to intimidate BYU. They were trying to emotionally be the alpha male and give BYU extra shots after plays at the bottom of piles, stuff like that. And BYU was having none of it. You know, it reminded me of the Oklahoma victory in the season opener a few years ago. And what I said on Sports Center, by the way, after that game was that BYU faced the mighty Oklahoma Sooners in an ugly street brawl. And those nice, married, church-going return missionaries hit the Sooners in the mouth and took their ball from them. That is, that, that's what happened here. Boise tried to do the same thing, and I was so impressed with the, with the character and the courage of BYU's players. They didn't just play well. They refused to back down, and that's not something you can coach. That's who you are. Our Twitter question today is, who gets your BYU Sports Nation helmet sticker from Saturday's win? What do you think, Trevor? Oh, Kai Nakua. Kai Nakua, the safety with three interceptions. I mean, while BYU's offense was struggling, Nakua and that defense, Bronson Kafusi and the rest of the guys up front, but with Nakua pulling the trigger on the big plays, kept them close enough so that those big plays by the offense would matter. How would you rate the BYU collective defensive effort on Saturday night? Love it. Love it. Bronco Mendenhall puts them in position. He doesn't just call a, a stunt or a coverage or a blitz because maybe this is a good time and the computer says that they have a tendency here. No, he's like an artist. He feels what they're going to do specifically on a given play, and when he dials up some sort of a defensive play, it's for a specific reason, and so often that reason pans out. So those defensive players were in position to make plays, but then, then they were the tougher team. That defense was flying around crushing people. And for the, the concept that some people erroneously have of BYU as a finesse passing team, well, all you have to do is watch this tape and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll crush that idea in a hurry. 
At ESPN and in, in the circles you're in, what's the conversation like about BYU, Trevor? They love BYU around here. It's fun because because it's fun. I mean, you get jaded watching so much football. I mean, we watch it's uh, it's crazy how much football we watch. Live games, tape, everything else, and and guys around here, the the analysts, the hosts, they think of BYU as as really the entertaining show of the moment. And somebody on ESPN.com actually wrote a writer that this is America's team now. So you know, there's always been a respect here, and I, I think part of the respect comes from the fact that before they really knew BYU, they knew Steve Young as an NFL analyst here. And they respect Steve so much for the way he represents BYU that there's already a tendency to want to respect BYU. But then you watch them play. And then you watch them react after they win games. And it has been so satisfying and so much fun to watch that around here at ESPN, and I'm in the green room right now, right now I'm watching tape of, of Auburn to figure out what in the world happened to them, yeah. right? People are walking into the green room wanting to talk to me about BYU. So that's what's happening. Follow him at T. Maddich on the Twitter machine. Trevor Maddich of ESPN joining BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars had negative 14 yards rushing at halftime. Not good. Didn't get much better in the third quarter. There was some push there. But in the fourth quarter, you started to see BYU find some success in the running game. What allowed them to do that late in the game? Uh, tenacity and stubbornness and wanting to protect Tanner Mangum. I mean, the, they can't afford to lose Mangum now that, that Taysom Hill is out. And so I think part of the reason for continuing to invest in the run was to keep the defense focused on the run. And But Robert and I, being a former offensive lineman himself, could see his offensive linemen hitting hard. Now, they weren't winning the battles, but they were, they were causing attrition in there. They were fatiguing that defense. But I think when it got to that fourth quarter, all those run calls started to pay off. I mean, the, there were 29 runs that were not from the quarterback. Some of the quarterback runs, there were 10 of them, were called, and some of them were, were scrambles. But if you just take the, the non-quarterback runs, there were 29 total in the game. And so, you know, I think you could, Robert and I could see that there was benefit, even though those benefits weren't showing up in yards. It protected his quarterback, and it set up that fourth quarter. Because in the fourth quarter, again, you go back to alpha male, go back to the caveman philosophy. In the fourth quarter, the BYU offensive line was the alpha Neanderthal that shoved around Boise State's defensive front. But that would not have happened had they not invested in the run early. A lot happened on Saturday that was interesting, and I thought, Robert and I, the fans were frustrated at the amount of rushing calls, um, despite, you know, and, and not working. But what happened in the fourth quarter was something, the line all of a sudden uh, created holes, BYU was better conditioned, something happened to where BYU scored 21 points in that quarter. What did you see from maybe the O-line in the rushing game that actually worked in the fourth? Well, conditioning is a part of it. Uh, keep in mind that BYU recruits to the honor code. They also train to the honor code. Now, I've been out there a couple of times in the off season talking to the strength and conditioning staff, and they've told me, and also Bronco, they told me that that because of the honor code, they expect their players to not have as many pollutants in their body, you know, the things that you're, you're told to avoid. And because of that, they use high technology to train and monitor very closely the actual physiological state of players' bodies under stress. And they're able to take that up to the point to where they can get the maximum conditioning out of it without going over and having it become detrimental. And so they, they expect with the go fast, go hard, Hard, they expect that honor code to give them an edge later in games. Now, whether or not this is directly related to that, I don't know. But certainly that philosophy uh, paid off in terms of, of extra conditioning with extra purity in the bodies that are being conditioned. Trevor, it's tough to turn the page after another miraculous win. It was tough to go from Nebraska to Boise State, now from Boise State to UCLA. But the Cougars have to go in and face a 10th-ranked team in the country on the road at the Rose Bowl. How do they pull off an upset in Pasadena? I want to see the tall receivers get angry, get tough, because that's, that's what they need. I mean, the BYU to drive the ball down the field uh, is, is a hard thing for them still uh, early in games against better defenses. They really are reliant on those big plays. And they've got four receivers on the depth chart that are between 6'4 and 6'6. The problem is that sometimes those guys don't go up 
with a, with an anger, with a proprietary intent to take that ball because it's theirs. The one of the interceptions that Mangum threw, he was throwing it up towards one of those tall guys, Taron Houck, on the right sideline, streaking down the sideline, and the ball was thrown a little bit short, and so Houck just sort of drifted away from it, and the defender stepped in front and went up and got the ball. Well, that defender was seven inches shorter and forty pounds smaller than Houck. I would have wanted to have seen Houck jump up and beast the ball away from him. Um, and those tall guys need to do that. They went up and got a few balls up in the air, jumped high against Nebraska, and it was a thing of beauty to watch. But when they are contested, they need to do the same thing. I mean, you see the way Devin Black, or Devon Blackman did it uh, in this game against Boise. He would go up and beast that ball away from a defender as if the ball were the last cookie on the plate, and he's one of ten kids. Right? He went after that thing. And that's what the tall receivers need to do against UCLA in order for BYU to maximize their opportunity there. One good thing about uh, BYU going into this game, and UCLA is the hardest game on the schedule by far, in my opinion, and, and they've looked the part, is that BYU has played two really hard games and won going in. So they have that confidence. How is maybe this set up in game three different than previous years where BYU doesn't play as tough a schedule going into a big game like this? Well, this will tax their depth because the thing is, you look at these four games, Nebraska, Boise, at UCLA, at Michigan, and by the way, Michigan, from a toughness standpoint, is fully and absolutely back. I mean, Michigan is, is going to be a tough game as well. And so uh, this – from a standpoint of scheduling standpoint, taxes depth in the way it hasn't been done in the past. In the past, we'd play a tough game, but then we'd have a game where we could kind of get out ahead and some of the backups can come in and get some meaningful minutes and things like that. You've got a, a straight month here where the starters have to be in there and then the key backups. And there's no chance for rest. And there's a meat grinder, a meat grinder physically that they have to go through. Now, it's a meat grinder for the other team, too. But BYU needs to stay healthy and, and fight through the physical fatigue in this first month of the season because there is no rest in September. Trevor, when you hear somebody say, well, BYU had to win on two Hail Mary plays, so maybe they have some things that they need to fix. I, I kind of look at it as, they're doing this without Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. The fact they were even there to compete in those games to me is pretty remarkable. How would you answer that debate? Oh, I, th I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you have to win on two Hail Marys. Okay, we won on two Hail Marys, BYU would say. Right? We won. We did it. You stopped us. You knew that the Hail Marys were coming, and guess what? You lost. That's what I think BYU would say. I'm not putting words in the coaches or players' mouth, but I think from a standpoint of BYU fans, I think that would be the response uh, to anybody who says that. Now, it is true that BYU has things to fix. It's not like BYU is, you know, the Green Bay Packers. But at the same time, after a while, you just get good at certain things. And Tanner Mangum has shown that he is good at being flushed out of the pocket and throwing the ball on the run up to a place where a receiver can make a play. And the receivers, especially the small receivers, Mitch... Uh, uh, Mitch Jurgens. Jurgens, yeah, and, and Devon Blackman were the smaller receivers, and they went up, and they beasted the ball. Wait till the bigger guys start doing that on a more regular basis. The, uh, and so when, you, uh, when you're able to do that, you're able to do that. And so I don't, I don't think it's a matter of luck. I think they put themselves in position where their, their skill and their luck were able to come into play because they had the courage to make the attempt. They had the courage to try it. They had the courage to throw those balls down the field and go for them. And there are a lot of teams that are, that are afraid to do that because they, they're just afraid to. So luck and skill, yeah, they, they, luck comes into it, skill comes into it, but courage is what enables the whole thing. Trevor, great stuff. We appreciate the passion and the insight. And for your sake, I hope you are not stuck in a car between East Lansing and Washington, D.C., having to watch the end of the BYU-UCLA game this weekend. Yeah, you know, I wanted to get back on the road, but I couldn't take my eyes off the game. You know, so. <laughs> oh, right, good guys. stuff. Thanks, Trevor.